One year ago, I got 17 kilowatts worth of solar installed on the roof of my home here in Houston, Texas. Of course, there was a significant upfront cost, but surely I saved money on my monthly electric bill, right? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. I'm gonna to tell you exactly why I chose to get solar installed, how much it cost me, and let you know if I saved any money at all. First, let's talk about the system I had installed and why I chose it. If you don't care about any of this and just wanna know how much I spent and saved, then go to this time here. Like I mentioned, I live in Houston, Texas, and our power grid is notably extremely butt cheeks. We have our own interconnect, which is completely separate from the other two main ones in the United States because, well, Texas. Now this means that when our power goes down, we can't even import from our neighbors and no matter how much money we spend on guns or building walls, our grid is still super unreliable. Crazy. There are a few ways to get around this issue. The most common two are getting a generator or getting solar. Guess which one I went with? Well, both, but we'll talk about that. So I made the decision to go with solar for a few reasons. One is because it can drastically lower your monthly cost of electricity and we use a good bit of electricity. And two is because it's nice knowing that I'm helping relieve the growing power demand down here, even if it's just by a tiny amount. Three is that there is a federal tax incentive for solar projects until 2030. And four is that I get to pat myself on the back for helping the earth out. Let me address this real quick for you cringe lords who seemingly keep a jar of oil on their nightstand next to the tissues. I know solar isn't perfect due to the mining and recycling of the materials, but if you actually think that using solar panels for 30 years is just as bad as getting power generated from gas, then you're actually a dumbass. I literally work for a power utility. I know how this works. Anyway, the final reason I went with solar is because I have terrible impulse control and I think it's cool. Now let's talk about the exact system I had installed. When going with a solar setup, you have a few options when it comes to the configuration and whether you want batteries installed. For the configuration, you can go with a DC setup that aggregates the panels into groups that forms a consistent voltage like 24 or 48 volts, and then those groups run to a panel that turns that into AC to combine with your home power. The other option is to use microinverters to group the panels and convert those small groups to AC, which then run to a panel to combine with your house. There are some pros and cons to each of these. Pros of the DC setup is that it's usually cheaper since you don't have to use a bunch of microinverters and it's often easier to work with if you use third-party hardware. The main con is that it's less efficient due to the nature of how the panels work when combined at the DC level. The microinverter setup is pretty much the opposite in terms of pros and cons, with another pro being that it's much easier to expand up to a larger setup. I went with the microinverter setup since I was doing a grid-tied system and the installers I went with specialized in this type of configuration. A grid-tied system means that I have panels producing power, but I'm still connected to the utility grid, so if I'm overproducing, I can actually sell power back to the grid and receive credits on my bill. This is great, but there is one huge Whataburger-sized problem here. What happens when the grid goes down? Well, I could just rely on battery backup if I had them. That's right, in a grid-tied microinverter system, if the grid goes down, your solar goes down. Unless you have specific batteries that can generate an AC frequency to sync with the microinverters. I don't have those batteries, and the reason is very simple. They're freaking expensive. This brings me to what a lot of you have been wondering how much did I pay for my setup? My entire setup with installation, tax, everything cost $43,870. That's a cash price with no financing. That's not cheap. However, I did mention that there is a federal incentive, which gave us a 30% tax credit this year, which came out to around 13,000. So net cost is roughly 30 grand. This is for a 16.6 kilowatt system and no batteries. You may need a larger system or a smaller system and the price of solar in your area may just be completely different. So how did I come up with that 16.6 kilowatt number? This is actually super important when building out your solar setup because you actually could end up losing money if you do this wrong. The two things you need to look at are how much power you're using every month and what type of utility plans you can choose from when doing a grid tied system. Because when you tie your solar system back into the grid, you can't really choose from the standard plans anymore, at least not where I'm at. Looking at my power usage, it's clear that we use a good bit more power than the average house due to my home lab and our pool. 
The number of panels or the total kilowatt of your system will be determined by that number, the amount of sun you get, and the type of system you go with. For the most part, if you go with a reputable company, they'll calculate that all for you. Now, here's the second aspect of it that's equally as important. You need to research what kind of utility plans are available when you switch to a grid-tied solar system. Oftentimes, these plans will have a higher price per kilowatt hour, but they'll allow buyback of excess solar. Where you have to be careful is that some plans don't do a one-to-one -one buyback, meaning that you may pay 20 cents per kilowatt hour to receive electricity. When you export it, they may only pay you 15 cents. This can get dangerous because if you don't produce enough solar to cover that increase in price and you're also not getting paid back the same amount for what you export, you could legitimately end up in the negative after all this is said and done. Also, make sure that they allow for rolling those credits over. I haven't heard of any plans that actually send you a check if you export more than you import for the month, since most give you credits for your future bill. I'm with Green Mountain Energy because they have a solid setup. I'm paying 16 cents per kilowatt hour with a one one buyback and unlimited rollover. I was previously paying 13 cents per kilowatt hour, so while the three extra cents is nothing to sneeze at, it wasn't a backbreaker. Alrighty, that was a lot of words. Let's just take a look at what happened over the last year, shall we? From September of 2023 to September of 2024, I used a total of 30,243 kilowatt hours worth of power, with 15,521 of that being imported and 7,398 exported. That imported electricity cost a total of $2,467, while if I was on my old plan, I would have paid close to $4,000. This came out to a savings of roughly $1,500. Assuming everything stays constant, we're looking at 20 and a half years to break even. This doesn't go into time value of money, the projected cost of electricity, an increased property value the panels at or anything, because like, I'm not doing all that. Basically, it's a long-term investment for me, and that's something I knew going into this. Some people may have a more optimal setup with a much shorter break even time, and that's great. All I can do is share my exact experience with all of you, and this was it. So with that said, what are my overall thoughts? Would I do it all over again? Would I do anything differently? Well, first off, I'm glad I did it. I like that I'm hedging my monthly electricity costs in the event that prices skyrocket, it'll hurt less. Do I think that's gonna happen? Shit, I don't know, man. I don't have a crystal ball. If I have to do it all over again, I really don't know that I'd do anything differently. I do think I did a good job shopping around for a competitive price as I had quite a few quotes for the same system that were comically high. I do wish I would have known more about the new plans I would be forced into with solar as I could have done more research, but in the end, I think I landed on a decent one. In the future, I actually plan on adding more if we end up getting an EV, which shouldn't be too bad as the microinverter setup I went with is pretty easily expandable. And when it comes to power outages, I can't say that I regret not getting a battery system because that would have added another 15 to $20,000 which is why I just got a tri-fuel generator for the handful of times the power goes out. And this cost me like $1,500. But that covers my setup and my experience after one year with solar. If you have any questions on anything I may have missed or just want more details, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. If you liked the video, then drop a like and subscribe if, well, I probably won't be doing more solar videos, but hey, subscribe anyway. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my solar array with full battery backup and a fat 30% federal tax credit. You guys are eco-friendly. And if you're still watching, you're a cloudy day. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.